Hey, what's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing, and today I'm going to show you how I mix those acoustic guitars and that pop R&B song I posted a couple of days ago. So uh, this is going to be a new series, I guess you could call it, and it's going to be uh, monthly lessons or you know monthly mixing lessons, whatever you want to call it. And uh, basically, what's going to happen is every time I release a premium tutorial. I'm going to pick apart something in that mix that I want to break down and show for, you know, people on YouTube. And then what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be including the session files with that. So anybody that's a free member to Modern Mixing can go over to uh, the site modernmixing.com. And then, um, you know, if you're, if you're already a member, then you'll have access to the files for this one particular tutorial um, in the member section. So this is not going to be quite as in-depth and you're not going to get all the files like you would in the premium tutorial but um, like for instance in this case in this record as you can see here I'm going to be including uh, the second verse and uh, also the hook and everything in the mix is going to be consolidated together into a two track except for the guitars so um, when you get the session if you're using say Pro Tools 10 um, or even Pro Tools 7 and 9 you can download the session file and then you can open it up and you'll have all my plugins and everything that I used on the guitars um, and you'll have my settings exactly the way I had them when I mixed this record so um, nothing's going to be different I'm not going to change anything everything's going to be the exact same the only difference is you're not going to get the full breakdown of the entire mix I'm also going to be including the WAV files so if you don't have Pro Tools you know you don't need to worry you'll still get those files as well so all you got to do is become a member just go over to modernmixing.com and I'll put a link uh, in the description below and uh, if you want uh, you know the, the full tutorial it's two and a half hours uh, of uh, video explanation plus you get the full breakdown of session files you know all that cool stuff uh, all the information will be there too so you can check that out so without further ado let's get into the tutorial right now okay so on to the guitars so these guitars uh, are basically playing out through the whole song and it's it's pretty much a four bar loop and it's just going over and over and over. So in order to make these guitars interesting, there was a little bit of mixing that needed to be done to them because they sounded pretty boring. But also it was very important to make sure that the vocal sounded interesting in the mix and also uh, the melody itself. So without that, these guitars would probably be pretty boring. So we have um, two different parts to this, uh, to this guitar, even though there's three guitars here. Uh, the first part is the high part. And that sounds like this. And that plays the, like exactly like you heard it throughout the whole record. I kid you not. But with the lower guitars here, um, these these are the thing uh, the the things that are carrying the actual uh, chord progression of the song. And uh, those uh, those lower parts sound like this. So with the high guitar on top of it, like this, it makes a little bit more sense and it starts to sound a little bit less boring by, by having that uh, one part repeat over and over again. But still, the sound of it is pretty dull. It's kind of lifeless. There's like nothing going on. It's just like, you know, boring when I fall asleep, right? So we have to try to somehow make this exciting. Um, and also fit in the context with the rest of the mix. So there's a little bit of a juggling act. I had to kind of go listen to it with the chorus and see how that sounded, then listen to it the verses, and then the second verse, the drum comes in and see how that balances. So there's a few things that I had to do, and I had to go back and forth, but this is sort of what I ended up on. It's not too much, for, but for like each individual insert on the guitar, I had the satsun uh, on everything, and basically... Um, this was just to add a little bit of color and on uh, for instance the high guitar here I'm taking out a little bit of the top end. It was a little bit prickly at the top So I took that out um, Also for the high guitar. I used the um, uh, The C1 compressor the side chain uh, just to take out some of the 4k area It was a little bit piercing on the ears I wanted to make it a little bit dull duller sounding and um, just to match the other two guitars because once I sent it to this bus down here the main bus when I processed them all together uh, I wanted the sound and the tone to kind of fit as one as if 
And so instead of it sounding like two low guitars playing with a high guitar, I wanted it to sound like all one guitar playing together. So that's why I kind of did this. Plus, this frequency was a little bit irritating on the ears. So I uh, elected to get rid of that. Um, the guitar one, I used the Satsun again, just boosting a little bit of gain, but nothing else. On the second one here, though, I'm cutting out a little bit of the low end just to separate it a little bit from the other guitar, um, guitar one, because those two are playing the exact same thing, right? So um, this sort of helped clean out some of that low end because these were both playing the exact same thing. And uh, it uh, it just sounded a little bit too much in the bottom end with, with both of them having the low end. So I decided to take one out, which is the right. And it helped to kind of, um, you know, separate them a bit in the stereo image. I'm also boosting it in the high or in the gain here uh, just to give some more of that color and texture. Uh, next, in the bus here, I'm using the Satsun. Um, the Satsun bus, and this is just to, um, you know, complete that analog chain, I guess. The Satsun uh, is supposed to emulate an analog console. Um, I don't push this thing as hard as I used to. I'm, I'm more about the subtleties with this plug-in now. So, um, so yeah, this is just to add that um, extra little bit of um, character or color to it. The next thing I'm using in the chain here is the, the Chris Lord Algae guitars, and honestly, I hate to say this, but I love this plugin, and most of the time when there's an acoustic guitar that comes up, I pretty much default to this thing. It has everything built into it that I like and that I need, and um, and yeah, that's exactly why I use it this time. It made the guitar sound really, really good. So uh, there's only four things I used in here. One was the treble uh, on the bite setting. It's It's got more mid-range to it than the other two EQ settings, um, and that's exactly what I wanted out of this guitar, more mid-range. Um, also the compression this is like a parallel compressor I have it on the push setting and I find that uh, with the push setting it also adds a little bit of um, EQ or some sort of harmonic or something to it in the upper mids and uh, that's why I wanted to use this one just to add that extra little bit of EQ to it plus the parallel compression on top of that so I got both out of that um, then I use the reverb uh, the club setting and uh, I wanted to put some space around the the guitars but um, as far as reverb is concerned, but I want it to be subtle and I wanted to have a short um, decay and the club setting was able to get me that. Uh, the hall and the arena were just too big, so uh, I decided to use that. Um, I could have used a completely separate um, reverb to be honest with you, but I'm um, just playing with the three of these and kind of settling on this, um, you know, this amount of gain here. It seemed to work. Uh, next thing I did was add a delay. I used the edge delay. And uh, it's just uh, a tiny bit. It's, um, you know, it's negative 7.7, whatever that means on this plugin. But it's near the bottom, so it's not adding a lot. But it gives the guitars a little bit of a bounce. So um, it helps them create some sort of rhythm in, in the track. So they're not so stagnant or just dead sounding. This kind of gives it some life. So um, then the last thing I used was this Bomb Factory uh, compressor. And um, initially when I was reaching for a compressor, um, there was something that I wasn't liking with the dynamics on these guitars. And uh, I tried a bunch of different compressors and then I finally said, you know what, let me, let me try this one here. And I ended up putting it on and then I started playing with the settings and pushing a little bit harder, pulling back. And then I eventually settled into the zone where it was just like, wow, that, that's kind of got some bounce to it. You know, it's, it's doing something nice to it where it's, it's actually changing um, the rhythm of the guitar a little bit, which I liked. It sounds a little bit more compressed than I like, um, even to my taste. I, I like things that um, are more natural sounding and not so compressed. Um, but for whatever reason, even though this is a little bit more squished, it um, the rhythm is there. Like there's something that's happening that that makes it sound better from a rhythm standpoint not so much from a dynamic standpoint but from a rhythm and uh, once you start adding things in like the drums the vocals and everything it makes a lot more sense but on its own you kind of just might be like well you kind of compress that a little bit too much but let's uh, I'll leave everything off and then uh, well let me go one by one we'll start with the high guitar and we'll do one plug in at a time and see what it sounds like It's like, whoa, we just went from dull to more dull. <laughs> but don't worry, that's going to change once it gets to the bus. So next is guitar one.
and guitar two, same thing. Now let's hear them all together. Now let's hear it before. And after again. But you can hear how that high guitar before, when all the plugins were off, it stood out a lot more, like almost like a sore thumb. But now that I added all that processing to it, it pulled it back and it made it closer to the tonality of the other two guitars, which is exactly what I wanted. Because now I'm getting into the process of, uh, of making everything a lot more brighter and exciting. So first is the Satsun, uh, the bus. Let's check it out. So now completely bypass and then unbypass. Way more life to it. Okay, so let's check out the compression now. So yeah, for some people's uh, taste, like I said, even for mine, it's like pushing that boundary of too much compression, but it adds that much more excitement to it and it adds a certain rhythm to it. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the vocals. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn it off. I actually have to add a trim plug into this because <clears throat> it is lower in volume, but you'll hear the difference of what I'm talking about without the compression and then with it. There's just a certain rhythm to it that makes it sound better in the mix. So let's turn it off. Let's turn it on. I'm losing my mind when I think, think, think. Thinking of your body. So yeah, it's 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 less bouncy in a sense of um where the the dynamics in the original without the compressor was jumping up and jumping up and everything and and it was kind of messing with the timing a little bit, but with the compression on, it was it was bouncy in the sense that the compression was kind of giving it its own bounce, but it was doing it in a musical way where it was kind of pushing it out of the way of the vocal. So the guitar could kind of do its thing, but then the vocal could stand out on its own. So like I said, everything is in the context of the mix. So if you heard the guitars on its own with that compression, you'd be like, well, that's, that's a little bit too much. But when it's in the context of the mix, and then once you bring the drums in, because the drums have a lot of dynamics to them, because I didn't really over compress those, then you know, everything makes a lot more sense as a whole. But, um, but yeah, anyways, that, that's pretty much it. That's exactly what I did for those uh, guitars in this one particular track. And if you want to see how I mix the entire thing, just, you know, click the link below. It'll bring you to a page and um, you can find out all the info on that. But uh, until next time, I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. All right, take care.